2020, some 350 more courts were authorized to conduct video conferencing hearings, bringing the total number to 1,350 courts. As shared by Court Administrator Midas Marquez to our judicial neighbors in the Asian during a recent web webinar hosted by the Judicial Integrity Network in Asian titled Justice in Time of COVID-19, some 22,522 PDLs have been already released since the lockdown in March, either through bail or recognizance, or after serving the minimum imp impossible penalty for the crime they were charged. I would have wanted to particip participate in the webinar and presented the data myself, but it was also on the same day that the Judicial and Bond Council held its first ever online panel interview of the applicants for the vacant position of the CA Associate Justice. I prioritized and presided the activity of the JBC being its ex officio chair. In anticipation of the general community quarantine GCQ to be imposed in the NCR and other areas, I made another issuance, Administrative Circular number 40 2020, directing, among others, that all branches of the course in the areas under GCQ be physically open with a skeleton staff by rotation to be determined by the presiding judge. We even allowed civil weddings to be solemnized, provided that the parties, witnesses, and guests shall not exceed five, notwithstanding the guidelines on the pace transition from ECQ to GCQ, which allows a maximum of 10 individuals during mass gatherings in the GCQ areas. The Supreme Court was back on full operation on June 1st, the first day of the GCQ and NCR. In preparation for this, I made sure that the court had placed health safeguards for all returning officials and employees. We installed disinfection chambers, dubbed as SC's automated frontliners, located at the lobby of the, SM, of the SC main building and near the entrance of the general building in Padre Faura, Manila. Since most of the justices are already senior citizens, my, myself included, the court also placed acrylic dividers in between the seats in the end bank conference room so that we can strictly observe the required physical distancing during deliberations. Likewise, rapid tests were conducted among SC employees with prior coordination with the city of Manila and the Philippine Red Cross by the course of medical personnel. Only those who have tested negative are allowed to enter the SC premises. Incidentally, the SC is celebrating its 119th year today. Unlike in previous years, we are breaking tradition by commemorating the court's anniversary today without the usual fanfare and merriment. It, however, remains a meaningful celebration. As Chief Justice, it is my fervent hope for the judiciary to not let even this pandemic dampen our determination as public servants to continue promoting an effective and responsive judiciary. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow justices of the court and all the officials and employees of the SC for answering the call of service and rising to the occasion during these most difficult times to ensure that, that access to judicial service continues unhampered. I would like to assure all that I shall do everything within my authority as Chief Justice to safeguard everyone's health and welfare as we all fulfill our constitutional duties and function. A pleasant morning to all. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. We will now call on the members of the media to ask their questions in the order as it appeared in the chat box. Our first question is from Mr. Ray Panaligan of Manila Bulletin. Hi, good morning po, Chief Justice. And good morning to everyone. Yeah, yeah. And good morning also, uh, Mang Ray. Opo. I think, I think the most, you are the most senior among us. Opo, mas matanda pa nga po ako sa inyo. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Sir, ang question ko, my question is about video conferencing. Yes. Considering that about 1,500 trial courts nationwide are now engaged in this online hearing of cases, and more than 22,000 PDLS, persons deprived of liberty, have been released through video conferencing. Uh, last June 3, 
Associate Justice Leonen urged some constitutional issues yeah. in connection with video conferencing, such as lack of transparency of the procedure, right to uh, confront witnesses, and process and process of authentication. Yeah. Justice Leonen said that the court has been tackling these issues. Yeah. Have you or has the Supreme Court resolved these constitutional yeah. concerns? Oh, no, that, yeah. that, that's a good question, uh, Ray. Thank you. Only yesterday, we started already with the uh, deliberation on the proposed uh, rules on video conferencing. Now, uh, your, your question is a little bit long, so my answer will be also a little bit long. So that I can explain very well why we adopted video conferencing. It's like this, no? The video conferencing actually, actually, is not in our rules. There is no rule that allows video conferencing except that, that this, except that one that is now under pilot testing in Dabao. When the problem of, uh, of uh, closure of the courts, and the problem came up with closure of the courts, and only urgent matters were there being taken up. There were concerns uh, brought to me by judges and even practitioners, especially the court administrator, that we had to do something because our courts are not doing. So we came out with, because we were officially closed, so we came out with the resolution. You know, if you are a judge in, in Manila, you're a judge in Manila, no? then your territorial jurisdiction is only within Manila. So if you conduct a video conferencing in your residence, somewhere in Paranaque, there is a question whether or not that judge can hear a hearing outside the territorial jurisdiction. So that's one of the concerns probably we just explained. But we were able to resolve that because under the rules of court, under the rules of court, there is what we call a mode of discovery, which we call oral deposition. And in oral deposition, the testimony witness may be taken outside the territorial jurisdiction of the court. That's why if you look at the circular that I issued, Video conferencing is akin to a deposition. That, was, that is the one that justifies the video conferencing when the courts were closed. Because they cannot go to the respective courtrooms, so we, we allowed that now. In criminal cases, because there is now a, uh, a, a pilot testing in Dabao, what we did was, in order that the other courts can also conduct video conferencing in criminal cases, we expanded the coverage of the pilot testing because those rules were already published in June. And you know, your rules of the court should be published. There must be deliberation, must be published, because rules may become the law. So instead of coming out with rules on video conferencing, and then it will uh, take time, what we did in criminal cases was to expand the pilot testing of the video conferencing in Dabao. That's why we were able, yeah, that's why we were able to Okay, okay. That's why we're able to uh, to apply the video in criminal cases outside. Now, this is now the concerns. Okay, there's no problem probably in video conferencing of a testimony of the witness now in civil cases. There may be no problem now in civil cases, mm -hmm. but maybe there may be a problem of uh, video conferencing in the testimony of of a criminal case because the accused might raise the issue that I have the right to confront the witnesses and the trial should be public in nature. That's for this one. The other one is this, no? that's why we are very careful in they saying that video conferencing should not be the new normal, no? You know, if you are, if you are a good lawyer, no? Public prosecutor or a judge, there is what we call demonstrative evidence. Where, where, if a witness would like, if a witness is testifying, he can be cross-examined by asking him to sketch the places where the incidents took place. He might also be he might also be asked to demonstrate how the victim was killed or how the accused defended himself in self-defense. You cannot do that in video conferencing. That's what we call demonstrative evidence. So these are the concerns probably of Justice Lunen. And we are not trying to address those problems in this uh, in this uh, particular case in criminal cases. And probably probably before the end of the year, we'll be able to come out with a with rules on video conferencing, both in civil cases and criminal cases. Okay, now, when there was no more lockdown, in other words, it's now a GCQ, and therefore the courts are not operating, 
they really have not to apply the rule that the testimony of the witness should not be taken on site. Because the judge is already there. But that will, not, that will not prevent the judge from conducting a video conferencing because that is still within the circular that I issued. So you know, video conferencing is still continuous, is still continue, will still continue. And until until some time that we came out with uh, rules, probably we'll, uh, we will come out with rules on testimonies and also on other matters, not only testimony. Not let's go to the criminal cases. In criminal cases, the video conferencing that we have now in Dabao is unique. What we did, what we are doing in Dabao is that the, the judge conducts a trial inside the courtroom. And there are two cameras focused on the judge and focused on the witness. The PDL is in the jail. And the city jail provided a, an office, no, similar to a court, where the, where the, uh, where the, the detention prisoner can view what is happening inside the courtroom because he has also a big TV monitor. And the, we allow the lawyer to sit with the judge, I mean, with the accused, or even the counsel can also appear into the courtroom. So the face to face trial, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe uh, already, may, maybe, uh, maybe already satisfied because of that system, because he can see what is happening and so on. Now, yung, yung zooming is a, is, is a, funny, it's a, uh, iPhone. Now, the, the problem there is, you know, I hope they will not do this, but supposing you're being, the test is being taken, what appears in the iPhone is your face. Eh? What about in your surrounding? You cannot see or it goes in, in your surrounding. So uh, we do not also want to go on with video conferencing and then we will be sacrificing justice, no? There might be miscarriage of justice, especially in criminal cases. But as I said, in those cases where video conferencing, video conferencing does not cover testimony, like plea bargaining, plea of guilty, promulgation of judgment, reduction of bed ban, no problem, because there is no testimony being taken. So that's why we had 22,000 22, uh, already released of, uh, of released PDLs because of this video conferencing. Takarula na problema sa video conferencing in so far as a testimony of the witness is concerned. So that's a long answer. I hope uh, I hope you were able. Everybody understood my my explanation. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Penaligan. Our next question will be coming from Tina Panganiban Perez of GMA News. Yes, yes, Tina. Good morning, Paul Chief Justice. Good morning. The question is very short, but you can give a long answer. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> how has the pandemic affected the speedy resolution of cases? Has it set back the courts? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. A, a little bit, a, a little bit, but. Uh, those those cases that should have been heard, you know, in a regular on a regular pace during pandemic, it was not done. But why I'm happy also that in spite of the pandemic, there were many matters that were taken up, that were taken, but like release of PDLs, and also there were promulgation of judgments that were done. No, we were not uh, zero in accomplishment. In fact, we did a lot. Uh, to me, it was unexpected. But as I said, no, everybody cooperated, lawyers, fiscal, everybody cooperated. That's why we achieved so much. To me, it was an it was unexpected. You can just imagine in two months' time, we were able to release 22,200 PDLs. You could just imagine if they were not released and then brought to the, to, to the PJMP, which already overcrowded. You can just imagine the, the, uh, the effect. No? So I'm happy with the performance of the judiciary. And I hope likewise. The public has accepted what uh, what we have been is accepting what we have been doing during this difficult time. Talagang iba talaga. But you know, I tell you this, no? I I I think uh, we were warned, eh, kami, eh. You know, as early as June, we were already thinking of video conferencing because we were there were already rules. In fact, the pilot test na namin. So wala kami pinilot test and pilot testing because they face a problem on video conferencing in criminal cases. Eh. Because there is no specific rule on video conferencing, that's why I have to look for a way to apply video conferencing. So, we are very lucky that we have all already in these rules. The other thing is that it was also providential, probably on our part, 
because we may the rules of civil procedure effective June 1. Eh. Yung effective ng June 1, the rules now allow the filing of, uh, of pleadings through emails. Lahat na eh. Lahat, lahat na. And there were those who were saying, Eh, dapat yan, i-reset natin, sabi niya. Eh, we reset it as to the effectivity. You can just imagine, madidelay ang proceedings. Now, that is June 1, pleadings are now filed through emails. And then notices can now be served to private couriers. We, do, we did not allow that before. Eh. Kaya maswerte rin kami. I think it's providential. All, all those good things uh, uh, came down all at the same time to address the problems that the Supreme Court, the problem that the Supreme Court is facing now. Eh. So, maswerte ako marahil. So, maswerte ang Supreme Court. O maswerte tayong lahat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question, Ms. Tina Pangiban Perez. Our next question will be coming from CNN Philippines, Mr. Anjo Alimario. Anjo? Good morning, Chief. Yeah, good morning. Sir, my question is about uh, COVID testing. Sir, I think Justice Leon uh, some weeks ago said that the Supreme Court offered a free mass testing to trial courts. I think that's for Metro Manila. But some judges refused or don't want to avail of it. And he said uh, he found it very strange. And I'm curious, do you, do you share the same view? And won't SC make it mandatory for all courts in the country yeah. to undergo testing, or yeah. at least in Metro Manila, where the concentration of COVID cases yeah. Yeah. Uh, are located? Yeah. Okay. Now, the, the uh, what? No, I, I will first uh, discuss the circular that issued for Supreme Court justices and employees. Ano, huh? We made it mandatory for all employees effective June 1 before they enter the, the Supreme Court, they have to undergo. Nobody complained about it. Now, now, there were judges who were saying that they should undergo also mandatory testing. But the problem is, the problem is the most, you know, the judges are stationed outside of Metro Manila. So I told the court administrator that we will subject the judges, you know, if they want, come to the Supreme Court because they are near. And they, anyway, this is the epicenter, kasi eh. all all the victims of uh, all the victims, most of the victims come from Metro Manila. So, so we pity them. Because uh, they do not have, uh, no, they do not have uh, probably testing in the respective uh, uh, places of work, especially in Manila, because it's scattered ang judges in Metro Manila. Eh. Some are holding in private or their offices in private buildings, eh, not city also. Sabi ko, let's uh, let's ask let's uh, let's ask the judges to come to the Supreme Court free of charge, ganon. But you know, meron yung mga may edad na eh. Uh, I do not know. Baka takot malaman ang sakit. Uh, like uh, like probably like uh, Mang Ray, huh? <laughs> you know, and, uh, they are invoking you. Ano daw, you are not vulnerable. Mga 60 na sila. They are not supposed to report po. And so, marami silang rason eh. So I told the court administrator that, that we have to do something and explain to them that this is, this is for them eh. And it's not only for them. They're, uh, they're employees themselves. Supposing it's positive, di ba? And then we allow him to go to work. They want to complain among the lawyers. So my instruction is that they have to undergo, they have to undergo mandatory testing. Just counting explanation lang. Alam mo ang rason nila, takot malaman baka may sakit eh. Ganon talagang attitude ato yung mga tumatanda. Maybe a little bit stubborn marahil. But now, I think they are now undergoing. They now realize that there is a need eh, of uh, COVID testing. Now, the other problem, I, I, I will add another problem that was raised also. There was a judge somewhere in London that they should, they should also undergo rapid testing. Yeah, in La Union, there was a judge who said that he should undergo rapid testing. I said, the rapid testing is being done in the Supreme Court. He wants to come to Manila, then probably we'll, we'll, know, we'll test him for free. But you know, traveling from La Union to Manila you know, it will take a lot of time and, and resources. Because you have to use your private car. And I said, there's only one thing rapid testing. And they have a lot of money naman eh. <laughs> but that's a good question huh? because that was also raised during our meetings during the task force. Namin. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Anjo. Yeah. Thank you very much, Anjo. Our next question will be coming from Lian Buan of Rappler. Lian? Uh, good morning po, Chief Justice. Yeah, good morning. Um, my question po, um, in 2007, Chief, the Supreme Court under CJ Puno, 
uh, was proactive in the face of rising killings and disappearances and that it promulgated the rules on Amparo and the habeas data. My question is, does the Supreme Court see a similar urgency now and will it be as proactive as before given that there is also a report from the United Nations Human Rights Office that police are planting guns in crime scenes and that abuses are probably incited yeah. by the rhetoric of the president. Yeah. There are no cases pending before the SC, you know, on Rid of Amparo, Rid of Hapiaro's data, there are no pending. No? We are still active you know, because the rules are still there. If there are complaints or uh, complaints that uh, about uh, disappearances or unforced disappearances and uh, surveillance, unnecessary surveillance, they can come to court and then file the necessary the necessary petitions. And there are still there are petitions pending now in the court of appeals and even in the Supreme Court on habeas data and uh, and read of Yeah, we, 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 you know it's, it's still there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lian. Thank you. Thank Our you. next question will be coming from the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Ms. Donna Pazibugan Porcala. Ms. Donna? Justice? Yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you for this opportunity to ask uh, these questions. Mr. Chief Justice, my question is uh, first, we would uh, maybe hear from your thoughts on the uh, enforcement of our quarantine rules. What can you say to the double standard application of quarant community quarantine rules? No. Is there still justice under this <laughs> COVID crisis? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry I might not be able to answer your question you know, uh, because it is an opinion that might you know, mis be misinterpreted. So, excuse me. I know, please ask another question. <laughs> Thank you, just the same tone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Donna. Our next question will be coming from Ms. Christine Patag of philstar.com. Christine? Good morning, Justice. Yes, good morning. This is Christine Patag from Philippines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, my question is, is there a constitution, uh, constitutional basis for the government to prohibit holding of rallies when the state of public emergency is in place? Mayroon yung mga tanong yun. I'm sorry, ah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, not be able, I'm sorry, I might not be able to answer your question, Tin. Ano, ah. I'm sorry lang, sorry, but... Uh, yeah. I cannot, I cannot now give an uh, answer to that uh, deep, very, very difficult question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, sorry about that, Ms. Tin. Uh, our next question will be coming from Bomborajo, Mr. Gerald Ulep. Gerald? Yes, the Imbag uh, Agsapa, Chief Justice. Uh, madali lang yung tanong ko, Chief Justice. Masasagot mo to. <laughs> Kasi sa kabilang uh, bakuran ninyo sa Department of Justice, marami-rami yung mga nagpositibo sa COVID-19 uh, doon sa rapid test. Kumusta po yung resulta ng uh, rapid test dyan sa Supreme Court? May mga nagpositibo rin po ba na mga empleyado ng Supreme Court? Well, ano, sa tingin ko, mga dalawa lang eh. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there, there were only two or three. But uh, after a confirmatory test, negative naman sila. Ma meron pa ba? Uh, susunod the uh, Chief Justice? The... Wala, wala na, wala na. I think, uh, okay. I can, uh, tatlo lang ata yan eh. But uh, the result from, the result dun sa Philippine National Red Cross after a confirmatory test, negative naman sila. I think in the DOJ, uh, a little, uh, a little I think a little more than 20. But sa kanila naman eh, because it's rapid test, it's positive, but uh, it has, they had yet to be confirmed by, by Chinese General Hospital at if they are positive for COVID. Yeah. Okay po, so safe pala kahit uh, sinasabi nyo kanina na senior, most, most vulnerable na yung mga ju justices po. <laughs> oh justice. yeah, but uh, if you come to the Supreme Court, uh, you, will see, you will see what we are doing in the Supreme Court. Mm. All visitors, ano, ha? we do not allow visitors from outside, but if you are a visitor of the uh, justices, then you can come here, but you have to undergo rapid tests free because you are a visitor of the justice. No? 
Then we do not allow also uh, transactions. You know, in the meantime, it should be they should be transacted through the emails. Limiting. Then we have also uh, disinfect uh, tents. Uh, we have two, and then uh, we are, we are really very careful. No, we are really very careful. Everybody is uh, contributing. No, and uh, and cooperating. So that okay, but I mean. So that there will be no no one being contaminated with this disease or virus. Maraming salamat po, Chief Justice. Oh, ni mga bigat mo. Oh, ni mga bigat, sir. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Gerald. Our next question will be coming from GMA News Online, Miss Nicole Lagrimas. Nicole. Yes, Nicole. Good morning. Good morning, sir. This is connected to the question about video conferencing. Yes. You've talked about yung constitutional issues. I would like to follow up on the technological issues because some judges have uh, raised slow internet connection. How is the Supreme Court addressing this? Yeah, that is also, you know, I, I have employed one of the uh, experts, one of the experts in the technology, you know. I pirated him from another office and he's helping us a lot. I do not like to give his name because he might be pirated. So he's very good in technology and I have already advised him to come up with a better technology that will now be incorporated in the rules that we are now formulating, drafting. But if you are asking how effective it is, I, I can show you some data. No? Now, from May 4 to 8, there were video conferencing uh, hearings conducted. There were 129. And the success rate is 93%. From May 11 to May 15, there were 665 video conferencing con hearings conducted, and the success rate is 96%. Then from May 18 to May 22, there were 2,406 video conferencing hearings, and the success rate is 93%. Then from May 25 to May 29, there were 4,424 video conferencing hearings conducted, and the success rate is 91%. So the average would be around 94%. So probably the 6% is the, the, the one that uh, gave us, uh, the one that, a portion that was that gave us the problem probably on technology. So this is only a small portion, a small percentage, yeah. But I, I agree with you that in some places, especially the far from places, there are clearly a problem on technology, but we will try to address that, okay? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you also. Thank you so much, Nicole. Our next question will be coming from inquire.net. Ms. Tetch Torres Tupas. Tetch. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, Tetch. Uh, sir, um, part ng uh, agenda ninyo is incorporating technology in hearings and trials. Yeah. Um, where are we now in with regards to execution? Kasi everything should be done fast. Parang lahat nag yeah, yeah. in creating policies. How is the Supreme Court adjusting in terms of budget, purchasing the equipments, and yung trainings ng mga judges? The, in so far as video conferencing is uh, concerned, I think we don't have any more problems. We have uh, little problems, but we are, uh, we are there now, and then we are implementing. We continue to implement it. But if you are asking for other technology like e-court hearing, yes. and uh, it's not being tested, piloted, because e-court hearing is different from video conferencing. Yung e-court kasi, it will be a, uh, it will be a uh, trial, trial now, and the video conferencing is actual testimony uh, outside the courtroom. So yung video conferencing, I think uh, a little, a little policing and uh, and then addressing some of the concerns of uh, my my colleague about constitutional uh, in, you know it might be constitutional infirmities but in so far as uh, others like e court we are now uh, in the process of uh, testing no pilot testing the court system but they have already applied also like uh, e court like in the uh, e subpoena in, in, in subpoena to uh, to our uh, friends from the PNP and from the uh, NBI, I think, and then also uh, e, e, you know e raffle, no? Marami na rin eh. 
ang inintay na lang namin probably yung yung ano yung yung i i, i trial so that no uh, and e warrant yeah Sir, um, follow-up question, sir. What about yung management po ng court records? Kasi uh, may na-mention si Senator Recto yesterday about uh, establishing a Google-like search for outstanding warrants. Kasi given yung nangyari doon sa Piston 6 na yung isa hindi siya agad nakalabas dahil they still need to verify kung siya nga yung may pending arrest warrant. I think the the she I know she court admired as Marcus is here. He's familiar with the e warrant, no, so that he can explain it to you. Yeah, I'll give the mic to court administrator Maidas Marquez. Yeah. Well, uh, Ted, good morning, no? and good morning everyone. Well, uh, that's uh, correct. No? Uh, actually, prior to the COVID nineteen uh, issue, we were already in discussions with the uh, BNP and the uh, NBI or a uh, e-warrant no so ang mangyayari noon is uh, when a court issues a warrant it will go directly to the database of the PNP and the NBI so lahat yon nakakompile and then uh, they uh, they will also be updating us no? uh, where the warrants have, have the warrants been served or unserved tapos lahat ng mga pangalan nandoon so right away doon sa database na yon makikita natin lahat kung meron pa mga uh, individuals whose uh, warrants have not been served and kung sila ba yung the same individual no, that are involved in uh, different cases. So you're referring dun sa NJIS? Ito na ba yun? Iba pa yung NJIS. Iba pa yun. Uh, ito sa warrants pa lang to. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cartad, and thank you so much, Ms. Tetch. Our next question will be coming from Mike Navalio of ABS-CBN. Mike? Good morning. Uh, good morning, <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, re I remember you. Yeah, the UP Maroons <laughs> lost to UST. <laughs> thank you for reminding me, Chief Justice. Sir, I'll, I'll be asking about the current case, but I understand that you cannot comment on the merits. But may I ask uh, on the status, for instance, on the ABS-CBN TRO petition, uh, has it been submitted for resolution? It is, is it, it, uh, it is scheduled for uh, for another you know, for another discussion on July 13, I think. Yeah, because there are there were actually there there were two. Then there was there was another one that was filed. Eh? Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. If you are talking about the uh, cease and desist order, mm -hmm. that is scheduled for deliberation July 13. In mm -hmm. so far as the one that was filed last Monday. The member in charge asked for deliberation this coming Tuesday because that case was only raffled last uh, Monday afternoon. So we did not have time to go over the records, but that is also scheduled this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The other one that was filed by the first one, the other one that was filed by Atlone Gadungaito, you know already what happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yun, yun ang status yung tatlo. Yeah. Uh, Chief, the clarification on the status of the TRO plea, just the prayer for temporary restraining order, because I understand uh, there was no mention of that before. Uh, uh, a spokesperson, uh, Osaka, has already clarified that has, that hasn't been acted upon yet. Uh, but, but, there are there are uh, statements going around social media that it has been denied. Yeah. Uh, what is the status, sir, about uh, the, the one that the one that uh, your company asked for? Asked yes. for, Kayo? Has it but been? That, Chief? No, no, that will be deliberated on July 13 because we waited. We waited for the comments of the house of represent the lower house and the upper house, and then we only I think we only received the comments uh, last Monday or last Friday. So the member in charge asked for July 13 for the, for deliberation. All right, Chief. Uh, we will we will wait for it, July thirteenth. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. Thank you so much, Attorney Mike. Thank you so much, Attorney Mike. Our next question will be coming from Isa O'Malley of DZWB. Isa. Hello, Paul. Good morning, CJ. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, CJ. Opo. I'm Isa Umalipo from DZWB. Marami po kasi mga callers sa amin 
na nagtatanong, ano daw po ba yung guidelines sa court hearings ngayon na may COVID-19 pandemic? Kasi marami pong mga tao na nagtatanong, hindi alam kung dapat ba silang pumunta sa korte or dapat ba silang mag-communicate muna sa kanila mga abogado or sa mga judge ng mga courts. Kasi ngayon daw po, as per do sa mga tao, wala daw pong malinaw na inilalabas na guidelines yung uh, court video natin. conferencing sa video conferencing ba ang uh, tanong yung hindi lang video conferencing halimbawa kailangan pa po ba nilang actual na pumunta sa mga korte ngayon nga yeah, po yeah. meron pa rin pan- yeah. pandemic may banta pa rin po ng covid-19 na so the, the judge should now schedule the uh, schedule of uh, the trial huh? now if the parties would like to avail of video conferencing then they will have to file a motion if the other party does not object, then it will not depend on the discretion of the court to grant video conferencing. Hindi, ko, hindi po kasi automatic yun eh. Kasi pag sinabi mo at, at, automatic, mas lalong magulo. But in the circular, we already mentioned, minagay namin doon, that it should be by motion, joint motion, or or by order of the court. So, hintayin na lang yung order ng kusgado. Now, kung hindi siya nakakatanggap ng notice, then that means that the judge is still uh, busy adjusting his schedule. Eh. Kasi there were cases that were scheduled during the pandemic. Iyon ang inaayos nila. How to go about those cases that were not heard during the months of March, April, and May. So nag adjust ngayon yan. So probably, that person who asks you kung kailan ang vista, let, let her wait for the notice. Kasi very hard because after June 1 kasi, nagkaroon ng ano yan, daming cases that were that were filed. So, ang ginagawa ng mga judges, they are trying to uh, uh, adjust their schedule because as I said, there were cases that were scheduled for hearing during the pandemic. So, in-adjust nila kung anong system ng gagawin. So, just tell your friend that wait for a notice from the court. If the, if the client would like a video conferencing, then tell tell the lawyer, his, his or her lawyer, to file a motion and then proceed to a video conferencing. Okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you also. Thank you so much, Isa. Our next question will be from Dian Buen again of Rappler. Dian? As Chief, sorry, I wasn't sure kanina if I was allowed to ask a follow-up. So I'll ask a follow-up and then I'll ask okay. my second question. If that's okay. Okay, okay, so, no problem. Uh, may follow-up po kanina dun sa tanong ko. Uh, ano na pong status ng Human Rights Committee that was supposed to be headed by Sandigan Bayan PJ Tang? And for my second question, Chief, because the Anne Bank has already acted on it, maybe you can discuss ano po yung naging decision on merit dun sa petition to disclose the health of President Duterte. What was the court's interpretation of Section 12, Article 7? Uh, you, uh, yeah. you, you just wait na lang po. <laughs> we will be... We'll be... I, I don't know, have you not received yet the resolution of the court? Not yet po. Yeah. In due time, you will receive the resolution. Ayaw kong, ano eh, ayaw kong overtaken yung, ano eh, yung resolution because the resolution will be drafted by the member in charge yung, and then it will be released after that. I think it will be released soon. Pasensya na lang muna. So, ayaw kong unahan yung release of the resolution. Eh. But tapos na nga, tapos na nga. Yeah. That's all right, Chief. Yung ano na lang po, follow up ko po. Human yung rights. Yung, yung, yeah, you, you, that, you, it's good that you asked that, ano, that question. Ano mo, I just uh, assumed my position last uh, November. Ano, and then, the, as you we, we all know, I had a 10-point program, so I gave preference to my 10-point program. Kaya lang na overtaken by this pandemic yung long March. So... Na, 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 na konting na-delay yung mga projects natin. But that is a good question because that uh, Human Rights Committee was organized, I think, by the former Chief Justice. You know? I don't know if you... I think it was just Chief Justice. Yeah, it, was, it was actually organized by the former Chief. I will look into it. I will look to it if there is a need to reorganize it or there is, uh, there is a need to change the, the members or require them to uh, start uh, having meetings pertaining to human rights. So, thank you. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Pucci. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Lian. Uh, Chief, our next question will be coming from the Philippine News Agency, Mr. Benjamin Pulta. Um, hindi daw po gumagaling mic niya, so babasahin ko na lang po yung question. Uh-huh. Considering the concerns about online security and to ensure the integrity of online hearings against denial of service attacks from hackers, do you see a need for supporting legislation for this or would these acts be covered by the judiciary's contempt powers? 
Yeah. Alam mo, magandang, magandang tanong yan. Sino nagtanong? Benjamin Pulta po from PNA, Philippine News Agency. Benjamin Pulta. No? Now, it's like this kasi. Yung, uh, it's, if it pertains to procedures, ano, hearing, procedures, or procedures, ang may, ano yan eh, ang may uh, authority yan, eh, Supreme Court. So, if it is within the authority of the Supreme Court, vested by the, by the Constitution, kami ang gagawa ng rules. Ano ba? So, video conferencing is uh, procedural because it refers to a testimony of the witness. So, probably, kami ang gagawa niya ng, ano, ng na, na rule. Now, if however, there is a need to have legislation, and then we will, we will, ano, we will uh, see to it that uh, we will, ano, we will seek the help of Congress if there is a need of legislation. And that's why I said that is a good question because just to uh, just to illustrate to you uh, the importance of legislation is there now there is now a pending bill in Congress and in the Senate. It's about the amendment of the jurisdiction of the first level courts. When it comes to jurisdiction, wala kaming power jan. But we need the amendment of the uh, jurisdiction of first level courts because we want to uh, unclog or unburden the regional trial court, the second labor court of so many cases, especially drug cases. So our mind now overburdened yung RTC. And how do we help them? Probably bring down some of those cases to the first level courts, where the first level courts have fewer cases than the RTC. So we went to, to, to Congress because it's not within the province of the Supreme Court to determine the jurisdiction of first level courts. And so I I'm, 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 no, I'm thankful to them that they have gave uh, a importance to our uh, suggestion that they now amend. And Congress, I think, have already uh, finished the second reading and is now in the plenary for discussion. And we are waiting for that because that law will uh, expedite the resolution of, uh, resolution of cases, especially those that are filed before the first level court. So ganon ang system. If it has something to do with jurisdiction, then we go to the to Congress, if it is, and it's just about substantive law, then we go to Congress. But if we, if it's something to do with procedural law, then that is within our province. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief. Our next question is coming. Will come from ABS-CBN again, Mr. Mike Navalio. Attorney Mike. Chief, I'll ask again uh, regarding another current case. Uh, this is with respect to the petition of uh, some political prisoners asking for the release of uh, the sick and the elderly in light of the uh, pandemic. Uh, there are concerns, Chief, about the speed uh, yeah. of which the Supreme Court uh, is acting on the petition. So how would you explain to those who are asking why there is still no action on this? Yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a good question. No? Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, the, mem the, the member in charge cannot come now to Manila and uh, there's no flight yet from uh, from his uh, no, from his uh, place in Visayas I mean to Manila but that is already submitted for deliberation and you know what we do in the Supreme Court is that we cannot tackle something if it is not deliberated upon and the one and the one who will present the case to the end bank is the member in charge so I hope that I hope that he can come this Tuesday, and I assure you that once that he's here, I, I believe that case will now be finally resolved. Chief, Sabi ko na yeah. Chief, if you don't mind, there's no option for that uh, member in charge to be able to participate in the unbank session through uh, yeah. Zoom. Yeah, yeah. The nagkaroon kasi ng nagkaroon kasi ng counting ano eh uh, technical problems. If, if he will not still come, if he will not still be able to come Tuesday, then probably we will resort to. Uh, video conferencing but you know very hard to have a video conference in the bale sana kung hindi siya kasi ang ponente member in charge eh. mm -hmm. and there will be like, all questions will be focused to him eh. mm -hmm. that's our problem that's why sabi ko well, how, how shall we do it if it is video conference kung buto lang yan and then deliberations have already been terminated he will just uh, leave his vote pwede yun eh. but you mm -hmm. cannot vote on something when there is no yet deliberation eh. Yes, and sir. the one who will lead the deliberation actually is the ponente because your questions will be asked. So, yun ang problema namin. But jokingly, I, I told him, lumangoy ka na lang. 
<laughs> but, but I hope, I hope, because they opened already domestic flights. Tapos na yun eh. It's uh -huh. only now that we have to follow what is you know, provided in the Constitution that we cannot we cannot vote on something if there is no deliberations. Eh. So uh -huh. yung nga. But uh, as I said, I I believe I believe we can finish it this Tuesday. Chief, if you don't mind, balikan ko lang yung earlier question about dun sa ABS-C petition. Uh, you mentioned July 13. No, uh, I no I said the the you know the uh, the case was set for the the set was case for July 13. No. Hmm. But uh, it may, it, when I say July 13, then it is, it is, uh, call again for July 13. So, I do not know if the resolution, I do not know if the resolution will only be ready. It is called again July 13. That's what I mean. Uh -huh. Chief, without discussing the merits, but uh, uh, are there any difficulties with respect to, that you can discuss with respect to res resolving an urgent TRO plea? No, no. <laughs> or it's really on the merit, so you cannot discuss. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I understand. Maka magagalit sa members eh. Okay. Thank you, Am. Sayang, wala nang basketball ng UAP. Next year. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, I think we have a question from Ms. Tina Panganiban Perez. Yes, yes, yes Ms. Tina. Pahabol po, Chief Justice. No um, problem. <laughs> may mga individuals po kasi, legislators, some groups, and even the IBP is questioning the constitutionality of the anti-terror bill. I know that it's still under review, but um, if anyone files a petition to question the constitutionality in case it becomes law, uh, ano po yung magiging procedure? Will it be through video conferencing pa rin? Or what are your thoughts also on the yeah. on the yeah, if, if if it will become a law, uh, then uh, anybody can, uh, you know, if he's affected, then he can question the constitutionality of the law. So as a process, it probably it will be filed before the court now. Uh, it, it, it will depend on the, the deliberations, whether to conduct an oral argument or to require a comment first, conduct an oral argument. It will depend. It will depend on the issues, you know, because they might be asking only uh, veto of certain provisions or the veto of the whole law. So it will depend. Eh. Kasi meron yung mga the question, they question the, uh, I mean, they question the approval of the law. They only refer to a portion or a provision of the law. Sometimes they also want to declare the, unconstitutional, the, the, law as unconstitutional, the whole law as unconstitutional. Sometimes only provision. Uh, sometimes they they argue that this uh, this provision should have been vetoed by the president because this is unconstitutional. So it will depend on the allegations and the issues that that that, that will be raised, and also it will also depend on the comment of the office of the solicitor general. If there are issues factual in nature, then we usually go to an oral argument. But if the issues are merely are uh, purely constitutional, and there is no need to go. And there's no need to determine the factual issues, then probably we just submit the case for decision based on the uh, responses and pleadings of the parties. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paul, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Tina. Um, our next question will be coming from Mr. Ray Paniligan of Manila Bulletin. Mr. Paniligan? Chief, uh, Chief Justice, follow up question lang po on ABS CBN. Sir, the July 13, uh, it's the, the case, the petition is on agenda on July 13. Are we expecting a decision by July 13? Or no. is the ABS CBN petition submitted for decision? Thank no. you very much, Paul. And uh, we do not, we do not, we do not know yet because uh, the comments were filed. Kasi nag, nag, marami kasi nag comment eh. We were re we required the you know, we required the Sorry, Congress first and second uh, yung Congress to write comment, and okay. then we also required ABS to file the reply on the comment of the Office of the Solicitor General. So nakaroon mga exchanges. Eh. So as what we usually do when uh, there are several pleadings that are filed and we are not ready to resolve it yet, we choose for a date for the for for the hearing Capital. or deliberation of that of that case. So. The member in charge choose July 13. Okay, po. So we just wait, na lang muna. Okay. Thank you very much, Pochi. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Paniligan. Thank you so much to the members of JUR and JOKRA for your questions for this morning. And to officially close this morning's program, I now call on again Attorney Brian Hasaka. Attorney Brian? With that, we conclude our event this morning. On behalf of the Security Public Information Office, I would like to thank Chief Justice Peralta, Court Administrator Marquez, and certainly not the least, our friends from media for making this event happen. Okay, thank uh, you. I, I would like to reiterate the apology of the Chief Justice that there were questions that he didn't answer.